It's done. I've done it. The perfect religion has finally been designed. There's no intolerance, no science denial, no radicalism, no dogma, just values and practices that help people cooperate and find fulfillment. We finally have the tool that we need to keep progressing indefinitely. I just still can't believe you left the church. It's my life. Let it go, man. I'm not denying that it's your life. You could live your own life within the church, though. That's always been the point of our religion. Everyone's free to live as an individual in, in harmony, harmony with, with others. others. I know. I used to believe that too, remember? Then how could you possibly doubt it? Pay attention to the world around us, Thomas. Billions of people believe that stuff. And we still have huge problems. Some people kill and die for some 21st century scribblings of a man so primitive that he thought general relativity and quantum mechanics needed rectifying rather than replacing by something mathematically consistent. And people teach their kids that nonsense. You know very well that my church doesn't do that. We're not anti-science fundamentalists like that, man. We live by the real, original message of the Founders' writings. <sighs> okay, I know that you're not like that. And I don't mean to imply that you are. But so many people believe conflicting versions of the same religion. It isn't the same religion. But it is! You can't just say that everyone who practices differently than you isn't a true believer. Some people practice in disgusting, harmful ways, and even more hold back progress with their science denial. Those aren't original teachings, though. Uh, people who do all of that in the name of my religion are defectors. Conmen came along every few decades, twisted the words of the text, and started with their own destructive cults. None of that came from the Founders' original teachings. Fine. Even if I grant that all the bad stuff came about later, I still have a problem with it. That religion was made by a 21st century man with 21st century problems. It isn't helpful to tie ourselves to that today. Plus, when you create a religion, others will always come along and, and make changes and hurt people. These things always devolve. And I'm done with attaching myself to something so historically volatile. We all just need to be done with religion. But until then, we're screwed. I get what you're saying, but humans aren't going to just stop being religious. If it's any consolation, things are getting better. Holy war is just a historical concept now. Human and animal rights are basically universal. And most people are scientifically literate. I'm not going to say that religion accomplished that, but we've still made progress with religion around. If it weren't for people doing something positive in spite of all of the negative, we wouldn't be where we are. Uh, criticize the bad religious ideas when it's necessary, but promote better ideas too when you can. Uh, sometimes that'll mean working with progressive religious people. All right, point taken. I guess that's a working solution for now. I want a permanent fix, though. I want a fixed path toward progress. You know, you could try to make one. You could start your own religion. Hmm. You know what? Our working solution sounds great. Religious non-affiliation is growing fast. In North America, non-religious is the fastest growing religious affiliation across socioeconomic lines. Atheism is growing as well, but so is the population who self-identifies as spiritual but not religious. There's even some overlap between those groups. Belief in New Age spiritualist ideas such as psychic powers, reincarnation, and astrology don't seem to be declining though. In fact, some non-religious people hold such ideas as very important to their well-being. This shift in religious interest has, for many, prompted the question of whether increasing secularization is sparking interest in new or different religious ideas. 
what if, some ask, non-religious people are seeking out new ideas and communities in order to fulfill needs which organized religion has traditionally met? Now, some pose this question under the assumption of the literal truth of a certain religion. They think there's a God-shaped hole in our hearts, and if we stray from God, we'll feel the urge to replace him with something else. I'm not one of those people, as I don't assume or assert the truth of any religious theology. The question, though, I still find interesting and even compelling. Even as an atheist, I think it's probable that humans drive toward a certain kind of religion, for lack of a better term, is innate. When I say that, know that the kind of religion I'm referring to is not described by the colloquial definition of the word. I'm referring to religion purely as sociologist Emil Durkheim defined it. A religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden, beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all those who adhere to them. If I were to put it more simply, I'd define the kind of religion I'm discussing as a set of beliefs and practices which provides a shared sense of morality and identity, therefore fostering cooperation. Using this definition of religion, I do see merit in the question, is increasing secularism inspiring people to seek out religious fulfillment outside of traditional religious structures? It does seem like plenty of non-religious people are seeking out Durkheimian religious structures to replace traditional faiths. With this possibility in mind, I find myself considering another question. Could we study the structure of religion, as well as its cultural and psychological effects, and then use our findings to design a religion that meets humanity's religious needs without any harm? Just to be transparent, there are a couple of ideas or assumptions I take into consideration in exploring this question. The first is that the kind of religiosity I defined is an evolutionary adaptation selected for because it was beneficial at some point in time. The other is that religious harm exists, that there are religious beliefs and practices which undermine human and animal well-being. If you'd like more of a primer on these ideas, check out my last video which discusses hypotheses surrounding religion as an evolutionary adaptation. So, if we set out to design the perfect religion, where would we start? I think maintaining a scientific methodology would serve us best. For example, say we want to figure out what kind of religious identity facilitates in-group cooperation without encroaching on members' individuality or encouraging bias against the out-group. We could perform cross-sectional studies on various religious groups, observing how their doctrine on religious identity correlates with members' self-reported behaviors and attitudes surrounding cooperative efforts with their in-group, personal expression, and perceptions of outsiders. In my last video, I mentioned anthropologist Richard Sosa's study of religious as well as secular 19th century communes, which found that communes which demanded more costly sacrifices from individual members actually lasted significantly longer. If we tried, we could find the ideal number of sacrifices which a group could demand of members in order to maximize the longevity of the group while minimizing unnecessary sacrifice. We just need to perform a series of cohort studies, analyzing the data we have on the demands and longevity of groups similar to those within SOSIS study. Okay, so my study design skills aren't the strongest, and talking study design probably isn't thrilling for a lot of you, but I hope you get the idea we could determine what religious structures tend to produce desired outcomes using the naturalistic tool of scientific study. We could study ritual, moral commands, mythology, identity, mutability of doctrine, and more to understand what a religion with our desired influence would look like. To be clear, this would be incredibly time-consuming, expensive, and controversial, but it's within the capability of the scientific process and could, hypothetically at least, be done. However, anyone considering advocating for this new scientifically stitched together religion should, in my opinion, first take a lesson from the story of another stitched together work of science, Frankenstein. In case you haven't reviewed the book since high school, the subtitle of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is The Modern Prometheus. This is a reference to the Greek myth of Prometheus, a god which empowered humanity by stealing fire from the gods and giving it to us. Although Zeus later punished him for it, Prometheus never regretted his gift. Likewise, Dr. Frankenstein, through his scientific practice, gave a revolutionary gift to mankind, the ability to bring the dead to life. At first, although it frightened the doctor, the creature proved to be intelligent, kind, and gentle. The attempt at scientific innovation was a success. 
As the story continued though, Frankenstein's gift to humanity became a curse. The doctor created the creature successfully, but when the creature demanded continued care in its request for love and companionship, Frankenstein failed to provide. The creature was not a monster when it was created, but because of Frankenstein's mishandling of the powerful force which he brought about, the creature became a monster. Accidentally creating an immediately monstrous, destructive religion is not my concern so much as is creating a helpful religion which eventually becomes monstrous. Surely, a religion scientifically constructed to promote the well-being of humanity would be a gift to mankind, but I'm not sure humanity could handle that gift responsibly enough to keep it from becoming a curse. Religions change over time. It doesn't seem to matter how unified a religion is in its infancy, inevitably all religions diversify, split, and sustain changes over time which are substantial enough to foster in-group, out-group conflict within their own ranks. To put it another way, religious systems, like living organisms, mutate, replicate, respond to selection pressures, and speciate. Religions evolve. This means our scientifically constructed religion could change over time as it spreads, becoming something which affects humans in ways we didn't intend. For instance, say members of our created religion begin spreading the religion around the world, but we find that converting people is much easier when the religion is made more compliant with different cultures. It successfully spreads to the Middle East, but only after it's modified to uphold a patriarchal ideology. It gains traction in South Asia, but only after accommodating strict social caste systems. This is mutation, reproduction, and natural selection. It's evolution, and no matter how hard we try to prevent it, it will always take place. What if, however, we inspired the change we want to see not by battling with evolution, but by working with it? Well, I think the culture of some parts of the world might give us an idea for how this could be done. Countries with some of the greatest wealth, social safety nets, standards of living, and education, places like Scandinavia, no longer tend to maintain the kind of religiosity we've been talking about combating, the kind that strips away human rights and entraps people in dogma. In the colloquial sense, these countries are some of the least religious in the world, yet their cultures still foster the cooperation necessary for a functioning society where individuals report high levels of happiness and life satisfaction. Perhaps the way to create a world free from religious harm is not to create a new, healthy religious system and hope it proliferates with minimal mutation. Maybe, instead, the best approach is to create the selection pressures necessary to force existing religious structures to change in the ways we want. Practically speaking, this would mean recognizing harmful aspects of various religions, and then normalizing ideas, behaviors, and institutions which influence those harmful aspects to change. If we're combating science denial and bigoted discrimination, we create and support better science education and social studies programs. If we're combating dogmatic superstitions surrounding frightening existential questions related to death, purpose, and the afterlife, we promote social programs which provide mental health care and promote better living standards. Hopefully, then, with better education and quality of life throughout the world, we'd see various religions abandoning science denial, bigotry, and fear-driven existential dogma in favor of less harmful theology. One could make the argument that this has already happened, especially in the West, where the production of great wealth and the spread of quality education preceded rapid cultural secularization. In the struggle against religious harm, are we better off just promoting better education, economic policies which allow for the production of wealth, and strong social safety nets? Should we play along with evolution's rules in this way, rather than fighting evolution head-on with a religion of our own? I can't say for certain that this is the right approach. It would probably work slowly, if at all, but I think this approach would be far less likely to create more monsters for us to worry about. It's my hope that through this approach, we could eventually tame the monsters that plague us. Perhaps with the proper care, we could see our innovative efforts reverse Frankenstein's classic dilemma and turn any curses on humanity into gifts. Thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. A special thanks to my community on Patreon, which keeps my channel going. You guys have really helped me over the last couple months. Thank you. 
If you like this video, you can leave a tip for this video's editor, Jeremy, or for me using the links in the description. If you wanna hear more from me, follow me on social media at the handles below. Finally, if you're an apostate in need, there are resources linked in the description to help you find community and mental health support. Remember to be kind to others in the comments, please. And until next time, stay skeptical.